Hey everyone, Sir Terman here again. And today we're gonna have another Eternal Showcase video, and that's because this weekend we have another Eternal Runeterra open. And this time, opposite of the last two videos that we have showed, we're gonna go for a more aggressive approach. It's gonna be Draven Sion with Juan Samira. This deck I think is really good at dealing with the Samira Seraphine decks that be running around, the Aphelios Victor decks, and obviously also well does well against Rice. So if you're expecting a lot of the slow decks coming into this week as Runeterra Open, this is a deck that I recommend playing. And I believe the Cup is mine actually got to second place with a similar discard with Draven Cyan deck last weekend. So it is already proven to be really good into that into the current meta. So yeah, today another game, another deck, I guess prepping you all for this weekend's tournament. So hope you enjoy. And if you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. Enjoy the games and I'll see you at the end of the video with some mulligan tips. Enjoy. In this match, we're going against Jens at uh, Jens, Jen, Jen and Annie. We have a lot of great blockers. That's one thing, right? We have a lot of great blockers. We have a lot of removal, like stuff like the blowback. Um, I'm actually going to take away the blowback for now. But she does require me to get rid of two cards, right? I'm, da I'm down to just do this. I'm down to just do this and just put aggression now. Just push five damage, play the baboon next turn, play the drag just after that, and just get value. Yeah, because the opponent's gonna go like this. We can challenge the Annie any time that we want. I guess if the opponent has the, uh, I guess there's one problem, right? Okay, no, it's a rear guard. Okay, that's cool. I was thinking of the two mana, right? The two mana one. That deals two to the enemy nexus with the skill. We wouldn't have a good blocker for that. I still like the sun draggers now. And then have enough for blowback after that. We'll take this three damage for now. Because we oh, it's, it's, it's a race. Opponent also has to be careful about how much damage I'm putting out. It's not just about how much damage they're putting out to us, right? So we can go sun draggers into the chumpers. And then next time we have enough for blowback on the two lost souls and we can kill the Annie. Which the Annie is a little bit concerning. And then after that we'll have the Revenants. I guess we don't even have to spend... Uh, we don't have to discard both, right? We don't have to discard both technically. Okay. Okay, so that Annie is going to be a problem. She's going to level up really quickly. I'm going to just go like this. Taking zero damage here, push another four. Okay, opponent's taking a lot of damage. If they don't open attack with Annie and level her up, we're still in a good spot because we can just kill this Annie right away. And I think I do like the blowback on both. Yeah, so we're gonna just go like this. I guess there's one problem now here, right? I'm actually. So the opponent has blo one blocker here, one stun here, right? Let's say that they have the stage hand. If they have the stage hand, they block another unit, and then they have two, three, four, five, six, seven. We chump block the stage hand. Now I think I like it. I think I like it like this. I think I like it like this. We just kill the Annie. Just go double lost soul. This is gonna burn them out. So next turn they're gonna have to block. We can play the Revenant next turn. So we kill the enemy before she can level up, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, I'm down to take the 7 damage if the opponent has a station. So if the opponent has a station, I'm okay with that. Yep, there you go. I'm going to chump block with the chumpers. And we'll take the rest of the damage. And we still have the revenant next. And the opponent has to have another stun in their hand to deal with the revenant. I'm in a position where we can burn them out with the get excited. That's why they didn't want to use the get excited. But I am in a position where I'm going to 7 HP, right? So now we're both at 7. We have the Revenant and we have the Sun of Urchin. So we can go Revenant. Ah, opponent gets another Sunhawk, okay. If that's the case, um, then this attack doesn't really make sense, right? Then this attack doesn't really make sense because I'm just going into their their Sunhawks. So maybe we just pass. 
We're taking an additional two damage by not blocking the Corsair. Otherwise, we can pay with Ed and stun whatever the opponent plays here. So we have our own stun here now. And set up for next turn. So if the opponent opens, I go down to five. Our opponent, actually, five is enough, right? Because the opponent would then have access to the Decime and they win. So maybe we actually have to stay at six. The problem is this Jin, right? The Jin is a problem. If they have Decime, they actually could get there because they ended up having the second Songhawk. Perfect. So this Jin is also a problem. So I guess we're going to go like this. So we can go Revenant first. I guess we can go here, right? We can go here. That gives me the blockers that I was talking about. Now we have a Mystic. So we can beat a, a, a Ferber. We have the Pure Ed if the opponent plays the Jin. Like, they actually shouldn't play this Jin. The problem is this Corsair dealing one damage puts me to five and also gets the Virtuoso. Okay, perfect. So now we go like this. We're okay. Opponent doesn't get the Jin attack and doesn't get the skill from the Sab from the Corsair either. So the Jin is still at one out of three, which means that they will not be able to trigger the Lotus Trap next turn. We have blockers everywhere that we need to, and we play the second Revenant and we're okay. If the opponent goes for Fervor here, I might be okay with it. Because I think I, just, I just win in the open, right? I just win in the open with my burn. And my second Revenant. And I have play even if the opponent does the Fervors in a like the thing with the thing that the opponent is struggling here is that they're only a one out of three. So even if they have the Fervor and they have the Jin on the field, the Jin will not be able to trigger his Lotus Trap. So the opponent is just stuck here, not being able to trigger the Lotus Trap. Unless they have double fervor in their hand. So I definitely have to block everything, of course, right? There's no question about it. As soon as I push two damage, I'm okay because I have the burn. And this is a free blocker into one of the Sunhawks. This blocks the Sunhawk. And this guy's block the rear guards. And we still keep one Sun Urchin alive. And we keep one Revenant alive with one HP. And then play the second Revenant. So unfortunately, like I think it would actually. I guess they didn't have the decimate. They didn't have the decimate. This is obviously a fervor. So they didn't have the decimate to make that open attack be the correct play. Uh, so unfortunately, they got just a little bit punished on, on what they actually needed to do. Uh, this still has the same result because I'm just blocking with the free ephemeral. Even if you have the fervor here, you, you only have one fearsome blocker and we have to burn after to finish it up. So we're just gonna open attack, and that way we deal with, we don't have to worry about the Lotus Trap stunning my unit. So we're just gonna open attack, place around a third Stonehawk for a stage hand. And then here they get excited, just finish them, finishes them off. So they have Fervor. I guess technically they could Fervor the Revenant to stay alive. They could further the Revenant to stay alive. Like they could further with the Jin, stop the Revenant, and and they could actually stay alive. But the Lotus Trap doesn't get doesn't get triggered, and you lose your Jin, and then you have Wow. We can still go ahead and play the Draven. The further on the Jin. Is a punish. I had to open attack though. I don't. I don't think I like anything else but the open attack. They're gonna go face. Okay, so we just win. They had. They had to do the. They had to do the fervor on the revenant because now they're in range of get excited. So. No matter what they have here, even if it is a decimate, they just lose to the get excited. So that's that's just game. 
We can even just play this Draven out first, get some mastery points on the Draven, and then play out, get excited. Uh, because the opponent, yeah, so then we just go here and we just went. Boom. GG's. So, if they play the Fervor on my Revenant, they actually get, they actually get to keep all their units alive. And they have three units, and we only have Draven as a blocker. I guess that's not true. We can summon another Revenant with the Draven, because we can just put the Axe on the Draven. And then be able to... Um, or we could get excited. No, we probably put the Axe on the Draven, and that way we get we trigger the Lost Soul. And we end up with two blockers, and opponent is going to be pushing three damage. I guess only two damage because we can just Mystic or get excited in response on the attack. So, GG's. In this match, we're going to get Samira and Seraphim. So, we need to just aggro them down as fast as we can. Wow, I like the Grenadier. Oh, I also feel like I need to. Like, the Grenadier is nice as an aggressive tool. But it also feels a little bit odd when I don't have the Sunny Urchin, right? I'm gonna keep it. Maybe I get rewarded with the Sunny Urchin. We don't get rewarded with the Sunny Urchin, unfortunately. But I might. I guess we don't need to do this now. We can go Draven into uh, Spinning Ants on the Grenadier. And we can keep the Mystic Shot here for Samira. Yeah, we can just go Draven here. We're still planning to kill this Draven. I don't even know that I actually play the Spinning Axe here. Yeah, I don't even know that I play the Spinning Axe. I think I just attack and keep this stuff for later. No need to make a name for myself. Just an impression. All right, we just go like this. We'll push the three. I guess I could have gone for it, knowing that the opponent didn't really play anything to combat this. We can play the blowback instead next turn. It's probably more efficient than doing for the Mystic Shot. Yeah, I think the blowback is more efficient because it lets me get the Fallen Rider. Yeah, you have to press your one here. We'll go like this. Just play the blowback. Get both of my units enabled. We'll play the uh, we we'll play the Risen Rider and play, play and then play the Revenant and just start pushing a bunch of damage. Opponents already down to fourteen. We have three, five, seven. Let's just play the Risen Rider. If you have a Mystic, you have a Mystic. I, 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 in this position, I just need to push as much damage as possible before the opponent can get to the Plaza Guardian turn. This is one of the reasons why I really like Draven Scion for this upcoming Runeterra Open. Because it just pushes so much damage. And you can kill the Draven all that you want. That's fine. Yeah, you can stop the Draven all that you want. Draven. Next turn, we have the Revenant. And we still have a bunch of discard fodder. That is the flock. You're going to have to deal with this Revenant, right? So you have to deal with the Revenant. And hope that I don't have anything else that I can play. 3, 6, 8, 10. So I just need to push 4 damage. Which this Revenant gets us there. The opponent just committed a Disintegrate and a Pirouette and a Flock. And Core. If they don't have it, they can just burn them out. Yep, they don't have it. So this time around, I will play the Grenadier. To guarantee we push at least 3 damage. If we push three damage, we're gonna be one off. If we push five, okay, yeah. So we're pushing the three. We're gonna be one off. But we have another weapon in next turn. I guess opponent is close enough now to have their class of guardians, which are gonna be good blockers. Okay. Let's go here. Another lost soul. Cute. Let's use my mana efficiently. Set it up. If we top deck the sign, we just get there. Right? Okay. Oh, opponent has all this mana. Hasn't done anything with it. 
They have to deal with two units. Potentially three if I also play this dredger. Which I think is worth it to play it. Just so that we find another blocker. Uh, just so that we draw another spell. If they'll put in place the Plastic Guardian here. Okay, well, I just attack, right? I just attack and force him to block with the Seraphine. I don't want them to level up the Seraphine with a slow speed spell. So I don't want to develop the Sun Dragon. Like, if they want to level up Seraphine here, they're going to have to use something that's fast or burst speed. And then play the Seraph, whatever spell they have, right? So they do get it, right? They do get the value from it. Because this gets duplicated. So they do get to stop all the damage. We can just some dragon now. And again, we, we're only looking for one more piece of burn, right? We're only looking for one more piece of burn or cyan. Either one just kind of wins us the game on the spot. Either one wins us the game on the spot. Now, the opponent has the Plaza Guardians now, which means that we are going to have to just rely on the burn. Oh, never mind. We get it. So, this is three, six, right? And then eight. So, this is four, seven, nine. Is there any chance that we get punished? Is there anything that the opponent has that could punish us from committing lethal this turn? If they got like a random guiding touch, I guess. Like if they got like a random guiding touch, I guess that's a punish. I guess a random guiding touch could be a punish, right? So I'm debating like there's too many good answers, right? They could they could easily have a lot of heal. I should just probably go for it though, but I don't want to go for it in a position where I'm like just losing the game. So maybe we go Draven first. See if we can top take the Cyan. One is giving us so much value, so much, so much, so much time. Oh, is giving us way too much time, I think. Way too much time. So, we can go blowback first. We still don't lose to that random guiding touch that the opponent could have gotten from Seraphine or from Sunspinner here. Don't ask for permission or forgiveness. If we go Revenant into second revenant and like opponent has the opponent has potentially the rally here if we go like this opponent has to block if we go second revenant they still have to block they will lose to the draven but if i go second revenant i tap out of answers i think i just go for it i think i just go for it and if they have if they have the heal they have the heal i have to just force it right if they have the heal, they have the heal. I don't. I can't give them more time to draw another sun spinner, to draw the sun spinner, or something like that. So I, I might have taken it a little bit too slow. But I have lost too many games to Seraphine's random bullshit <laughs> that I really didn't want to risk it. I wanted to see if I could top deck the Scion. So GG's. In this match, we're going against Braum and Nora. So I haven't seen this deck in a long time, obviously, because of rotation. But if I remember correctly, this here is playing... There's two options here. Either the opponent's playing... I guess the opponent's playing Spirits Unleash, no matter what. This could be the late game tank drop, right? The, uh, the tribes. I'm going to keep the Dredger. The Warding of the Tribes. This could be a Warding of the Tribes deck. I guess I could get the mistake, right? So that I could deal with Nora on turn on turn uh on turn two. So I really don't want to play this get excited. I guess we can go ahead and deal with her with the Samira. Doesn't need to be a Nora. Uh doesn't need to be a Mystic Shot. We can still have a Mystic Shot for the burn. So it, it, this could be a warding of the tribes deck, or it could just be uh hey, I play Spirits Unleash, all my stuff is huge. 
and now I'm just pushing a ton of value, right? We don't know exactly which one it is yet. Uh, we can pull the Nora and be okay from Trollshan. Because even Trollshan, if we pull the Nora, he only is gonna, he only, it's only going to deal one damage to Samira. I guess the opponent could have like double Poke Stick, or they could just go ahead and do that, and I guess that's fine too. It means that the Nora will continue getting value, but we are just going to slowly just chip them out. If the opponent has Troll Shang now, it does technically stop us. Okay. We're just going to slowly chip them down, right? So I think this is going to be the Warding of the Tribes. With the Darkened Spear. That's what this is telling me. Oh, that's a great draw. We're going to just put a lot of aggression here. I do need to be careful about Spirits Unleash. So I don't know how great it is. Okay, let's go Baboon. We'll go Pigeon and also have the Chumpers. Actually, I can just level Samira right now, right? Hmm. I could just level up Samira right now. Right? We can just go like this. We play... We can play like the Spinning Axe. We can play the Sunny Urchin and then the Spinning Axe. Or we can go Pigeon. We don't need to play the Sunny Urchin, right? We can go Pigeon. And they have the Spinning Axe into the Chumpers. And Samir is going to be leveled up. So we go like this. And now I have access to level the Samira, so we can potentially just rally our way to victory now. Time for the money so we can challenge the Mariporo with the Samira. Having that's the spinning at so they get excited if I need if I if I get in a potential in a, in a bad position. So we can go like this, just challenge here. Uh let's uh let's go here and like this. Pull the brown because the chumper is not gonna die to the brown. One spinning axe gives me two more spell, uh, two more spells. The zero cost flare is another spell. We can go baboon into sunny urchin if the opponent blocks with Nora on the baboon here. But I guess we don't have the space, huh? I'm kind of scared of a freeze. Wow, they don't even gonna block. Remember, we have this burn still chilling, right? So they're not even going to block. That's actually nuts. <laughs> I did not expect that. I, I, I kind of want to play around Spirits Unleash. Oh, there you go. Opponent does it for us now. So now that does give me the space to play the Boom and Boom, Sun and Urchin and actually potentially have the Rally this turn. So this is two. It's going to be three. Like we could technically Rally, but we would have to spend everything else in our in our hand. But this is, this is just lethal, right? If we do that. Like, if we just rally, isn't this just lethal? So, we can flare. We can challenge here. We can just spread out our damage this way. Oops. And then go this way. We get the rally. We pull here we pull here and this is exact lethal well not exact but still enough to just kill them i almost forgot about the pigeon by the way to uh, supporting a unit so i'm glad that the draven was the one that was right next to it otherwise i would have lost two more damage but this is the reason this is a perfect example of a game why samira is in this deck the spinning axis allows to level up samira really quickly so it becomes really difficult for the opponent to kind of deal with this so gg in this match, we're going against Orn and Jazz. So we just kind of aggro them down early and then just burn them out. That should be the plan. I love this hand. Because if I get... If I get a one drop, okay, well, not, not the right one drop. If I get the Sun Urchin, we could be pushing five damage right here. So it's not a sun urchin, but it's still not bad. We can go pigeon, baboon, and then dread your next turn. Keep the grenadier. Oh, never mind. No, nope, we're gonna go like this. 
That's why I like the Grenadier, because I just want to push this damage. I just want to push this damage as much as I can. Opponent doesn't really have great blockers in turn one, because all they have is the Weaponsmith Apprentice. And if they're losing that right now, it means that they don't get the Forge. So they're going to greet it out and not actually block with her. Which, again, is kind of kind of what I expected to happen here. Wow. Ha. Huh. Interesting. This changes things a little bit. This changes things a little bit. Okay. Hmm. How do we do this? We could just drop the dredger and just give, let, let go of the Samira. Or we could take it slow, just go for the player. Get rid of the Weaponsmith Apprentice and just push two damage. I don't hate this. I, I don't think I hate this. Force the opponent to have an answer. I don't hate getting rid of the Forge. We'll, we'll just push the two, take it slow. Play the Boom ba Boom. Just play the Boom ba Boom here. Opponent doesn't have anything? That's bad. <laughs> I feel bad now, huh? Yeah, so we can go ahead and just play this guy here. Samara, not, it's not gonna level up this time, but that's okay. We'll go for the pigeon and just have a really big open attack. If you don't have a fish fight, I'm chilling. Like, you need to have a fish fight for me to be scared. Oh, and Transcend Lord? Alright. That's okay. So you kill the Samara. You're still getting hit by. 2, 4, 8, 11 next turn, and then we have the blowback after. Plus the flare, plus everything else in between. So we can just go like this. Put it on the chumpers, because the chumpers gonna die anyways. And yeah, you're just losing to the pirouette, flare, blowback, everything else in the world. Oh, they get to heal their Nexus 3. Okay, okay. So let's take it slower. Let's take it a little bit slower here. I'm gonna have another half block mender. I guess I could have actually put the blowback on the stack when I attack, and that would have guaranteed the lethal. But I don't think I need to rush it either. We have plenty of options. Like, if they summon something here, for example, we can go blowback, hit the nexus. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with this, right? I'm not opposed to this. You suck. Let's just do the flare and just do the one damage. Just so that we at least do something with our mana this turn. If opponent passes here. Is fine. We have a lot of attack. Okay, so they just have the second half blood mender. So they have the second half blood mender. Uh, we can go, I guess, here. The problem is that we can't really play this this lost soul, right? We won't be able to play this lost soul until after. So if we blow back first, we're not playing this guy until next turn. So we can blow back here so the opponent cannot attack with both. Next time we can always play the Scion. And also have the uh, the spinning ads. I, 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 like, I like the Scion. I like the Scion. Have this Piru Egg. So we go Scion here. The spinning ads with the Grenadier lets me level up the Scion at burst speed. And then we have the stun for the combat cook. Their half blown mender shouldn't be enough. Orn, yeah, Orn is not enough either. You wanted the god of the forge, you got it. I just need to stun whichever one of these has the most uh most health, which is gonna be the so good, I, named it. I guess the Orn, right? Because the Orn gets the big forge. Yeah, the Orn gets the big forge. We deal one here, stun the Orn, and the sign is gonna have the overwhelm to push Lethal with. Because even if the opponent blocks you the combat cook, it means that we get the rally. So then we go like this. 
Ah, uh, yeah, let's just put it here. We put it on the Scion. Scion levels up. We get the Grenadier. And we're pushing lethal damage here, even through the combat curve. And everything else also gets to attack. And that's game. Fortunately for the opponent, they had a really slow start. And we had a pretty fast start in our end, right? We could have actually, we developed in turn 3, opponent would have been even more screwed. Because they didn't have anything on turn 3, so GG's. In this match, we're going against timelines. So it's just going to be timelines. It costs 2 now, so at least it's going to kind of make them lose a little bit of tempo. I like the Fallen Riders. I like the Fallen Riders. Obviously, I need to have a discard fodder for them, though. Uh, a discard card for them. Get excited, I guess. Is does the trick? Yeah, I guess get excited does the trick. We can go pigeon. So we can go pigeon. We don't need to do anything here because we can get this guy to to three HP later. Uh sure. We have two options. We could go for the get excited here. But I think I'm just going to go for this fall, Risen Rider. So I'm just going to go for the Risen Rider. And I guess the opponent could have a Pie Toss though. So that if I if I damage that, the Pie Toss is a little bit annoying. Because the Pie Toss will be able to kill the, the Rider. The yeah, opponent gets their timelines. So hear me out. What if we just push damage like this? But it's the same thing because opponent then would just be able to block this one. So I think I'm just going to go for the Fallen Rider. If the opponent plays like a Castaway or something, that's fine. Oh, they're just going to miss it? Okay. I'm just going to attack for two. Have you block? If not, you're taking two damage anyways. Okay. We have another Fallen Rider and we have to get excited to potentially punish one of their attacks. Or one of the units of the summon with timelines. Mm, that's not really anything important. Yeah, I don't think I really care about this this guy. Oh, as I say that, they get something that has 3 HP, so maybe I do care about it. Like how crazy is it to just get excited there? I don't think it's I don't think it's important because we know that the opponent has the big guys, right? They are the one that transforms and summons a free 3-3, three, three, so I don't think it's important for me to do this now. Then we just go second Fallen Rider, eat up another Mystic. Okay. So eat up the second Mystic. The problem is going to be, can he, like, will they actually get that, right? Let's go Lost Soul and just get a Revenant on the field. It gives me a target that I can actually hit with the Pigeon as well, without worrying about getting anything to a weaker state. Banana Blasted could get punished, but get excited if the opponent has something that's only 3 health. Mm, okay, they get something bigger than 3 health. I think that's fine. I think we still go for the Revenant day then. And just attack with both here. If the opponent wants to block here, that just sets me up for a potential get excited later. Or just a way to just have a block for the Sandcrafter with these girls. My hand is a little bit awkward. And I, like, I need to get Scion, I think, for me to win this game. A blowback is not bad. Yeah, blowback is actually not bad at all. Wait, yeah, blowback is actually huge. All right, because we can go like this. I guess let's go like this and just ignore that 2-3. We'll go like this and just kill the elusive and just have a bunch of revenants plus the pigeon on the field. One cannot attack with the sandcrafter, they can only attack with the higher gun. If they attack with the sandcrafter, I'm okay with that because it means that the opponent has no fearsome blocker for this revenants. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one, I don't think I agree with that. Unless you have like a pie toss to respawn, and then that's one less thing that we have to also worry about. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, obviously, you want to tell your fearsome block, but you could have done that in the beginning. I'll go ahead and play the pigeon. 
I know that the opponent will have blockers for the fearsome and the pigeon with the sand crafter. But he's still potentially getting me there. I, I do want to open attack. So I do want to open attack and play around. Oh, never mind. No, no, we don't open attack anymore. We just play Saiyan. We just play Saiyan. And just push this overwhelm damage. I don't care if the opponent has another banana blaster. That's fine. Archivist? That's a 4-3. That's going to go a little bit bigger. Might not actually attack with this guy. Yeah, I might actually not attack with this guy just because of this. We'll go like this. If you're taking this 9 damage, you're just going to lose to the Get Excited. And we have two cards that we can discard. We get excited because we're gonna get the lost soul back in here, all right? Yeah, and that's him. And noting any risk, risk of dying here, and, and that's what I said a couple turns ago, right? Having the sign is the way that we win this game, just because we ended up having the discard hand, like all this discard fodder that we knew meant that we we're gonna level up sign really easily. Like, yeah, you can go for your pie toss again. It doesn't doesn't matter to me. You're doing it now because you need to play that card that you got from from the girl okay so we start with the first get excited just to not put ourselves in a position where we're losing to the burn just in case that they have a i don't know they the, the, uh, the nine right so ggs hey welcome back everyone hope you enjoyed today's games of draven Sion, and samira I have to give her credit because as you saw in the one game, we were actually able to level up Samira and rally with her because of the spinning access, right? Uh, I still think that Cyan and Draven are the, the most important champions. Plus, Samira can sometimes come in clutch in certain situations where there is extra damage, allowing us to pull a channel, uh, allowing us to pull a blocker away, etc. Or even sometimes using the flare as discard fodder if you don't have enough discard fodder can be really useful in a lot of situations. This deck is super aggressive, and it, because their units kind of come back into their hand and you have a lot of fearsome units, especially the Lost Soul, it makes it really good into stuff like Seraphine and Samira. Of course, we also have the Burn, as you saw there. That's kind of how we ended up finishing that game when it was all said and done. So it is something that you also have to watch out for, that you can just burn the opponent out because they don't, tend to, they don't usually have a lot of healing in those decks unless they randomly generate something from like seraphine which again is kind of what i was worried about and why i kept kind of spending too much time i have no idea what the opponent had in their hand because they still had two cards that they were not playing throughout the whole game so it's kind of it's kind of a little bit weird there but anyways in terms of strategy with this deck just go as aggressive as you can early right so you're going for your pigeon, you're going to deal, you're sending urchin. You see that a lot of times. Actually, I did it twice in this video where I will keep one grenadier in my hand if I'm attacking on turn one in case that I get a sunny urchin so that I can just push five damage right away on the start. That turn one play is really powerful. So I don't, I don't hate doing that whatsoever. So you want to just push a lot of damage early on. So you want to keep some of your early units, grenadier, sunny urchin, pigeon, so that you have some good turn one attacks. Then that's when you're going to transition to like your Fallen Rider, Baboon, Sun Dragger, and obviously the Raw Soul and the Draven to push kind of more damage on turns 2, 3, and 4. And just try to push as much as you can, pulling units away with the Samira Challenge or the uh, Flame Chompers, right? So that you can let your units go through and try to get the opponent to at least like 10 HP. Once they are at 10 HP, that's when you transition to turn 5 and onwards where you try to find those last points of damage, whether it's using the Fearsomes, whether it's using the Scion on turn 7 or 8, or whether it's just burn them out, right? But if the opponent, if you can do at least half of the opponent's life with your units early on, it puts you in a really good position to just be able to finish them up as the game goes on longer. Uh, that's all you need to do, right? Because we also have stuff like the Pirouette that can stun and remove another blocker if they have a one health unit. So there's a lot of good ways for us to push that extra bit of damage that we need to just be able to burn their nexus up at the end or just drop the scion and force him to not have a way to de really deal with the scion without giving us the scion rally so again strat strategy you're gonna play this like a, a full aggressive deck just attack early on and then burn them out simple as that mulligan wise again i do like to keep one grenadier 
I like to keep pretty much my, my discard fodder. So Grenadier, Fallen Rider, Lost Soul are the main things that I like to keep so that we have stuff that we can use Draven, Blowback, Get Excited, Send the Urchin, and some Dredgers on, and sometimes even Grenadier if we need to, right? So we want to have the discard fodder. We don't want to be in a position where we have a lot of discard cards, but not enough discard fodder. I'd rather have more discard fodder than have discard cards, because at least that way you can still you can still get some value from the discard fodders, even if you have to play, even if you have to play them straight up. While you can't really do that with the discard card, so you might end up having to discard something that's more important, like a burn, if you need it, right? So again, I, I am looking for Grenadier, Fallen Riding, and Lost Soul. That will let me get really started. Obviously, if I get the Samira the Draven, I will also keep them because they are both really good at doing what they need to do and pushing damage, especially because they both have quick attack. So I'm looking for my champions and I'm looking for my for, um, my fodder. If I already have at least one discard fodder, then I'm keeping the Sunny Urchin so that I can just play the Sunny Urchin on turn one and discard the Fallen Rider or the Lost Soul or the Grenadier if you're attacking on turn one. Uh, that's kind of the general idea there. And obviously the Sunny Urchin and the Subject are really good because it lets you draw into the rest of your deck, kind of lets you cycle. So that's why I, I don't mind keeping them if I already have at least one or two discard fodders in my hand that I can get rid of early. Usually you're going to mulligan away all your burn and also all your and, and your science because this stuff, you want to see them later into the game. You don't want to see them early on because, again, the strategy is to do as much damage as possible later on, early on so that you can burn them later. So you want to kick away your spells unless you're going against Nora. That's the only time that will keep a Mystic Shot because it, it is important to get rid of that Nora so that the portals don't create additional blockers, especially fearsome blockers that can mess up your uh, recent Rider and your Twin, twin Blade Revenant, right? So that's the only time that I'll kick the, the Mystic if I'm going against Nora. But almost every other time you want to just kick your stuff away, right? So... I guess against Samira, it's also good to keep at least one way to kill her, but in general, right? So that, that's pretty much it for this deck. I think it's going to be really strong in this weekend as people keep continuing to play this these lower decks. And even like Yats Orn can be really vulnerable to us going super wide. So keep this in mind as you're looking for decks to play in this coming weekend's season. Uh, Runeterra Open. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed today's games. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch we shoot every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.